Well, Happy New Year, church family. Listen, I hope that you have made some changes um, that we have talked about on last week, transforming how you think, transforming how you live, and transforming how you treat one another. This is going to be a fruitful year for all of us. We just have to continue to worship and praise God in everything that we do. Hey, there is a word from God this morning. So grab your Bible, get your smart device, whatever you need as we get ready to hear a word from God. I'll be back with you in just a few moments. Father, thank you for this, the gift of another day. Thank you for your presence and your anointing. We thank you that God that is in you that we live, move, and have our being. Thank you now for life and thank you for your anointing. I beg of you now, sir, to pour fresh oil on my head. Give me clarity of thought and precision of speech. I do not need to impress, but I do want to impart. Don't need to entertain, do want to empower don't need to be clever, need to be clear. Would you bless our time in this place this morning? And we'll be forever careful and cautious to give you praise. Would you wash any negative residue of the world off of us so that our hearts can be fertile soil for your word? And we pray that as the seed of your word is planted, we look to you, sir, to give the increase. This is our prayer to you. The only name that matters, Jesus the Christ. We pray and ask it all. Amen. Well, grace and peace be multiplied unto you in the knowledge of God and Jesus who is our Lord. Happy New Year to each of you. I pray that God would bless you in a marvelous way this year and we believe that greater is on the way. Amen. Amen. So your pastor, the honored and able pastor of this great church, my friend and my new brother, Pastor Lamar Baptiste, we salute you today, sir. Thank you for inviting me to come, not to do any better preaching, just to do some more preaching. And we thank God for you. I am well aware that you have a gifted gospel genius in the personality of Pastor Baptiste, and we look forward to fellowshipping with you in the near future. There is a familiar passage of scripture that I want to lift on this morning. I pray and I hope that you don't allow your familiarity of a passage to rob you of something of something new. Would you turn with me on this morning to 2 Corinthians Chapter number four. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing. Father, I pray, order my steps in your word, please order my steps in your word, bright on my tongue, let my words edify Let the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. Take charge of my thoughts, both day and night. Please order my steps in your word. Oh, please order my steps in your word. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, beginning at verse number 8. I read from the New King James Version, 
not to shy away from whatever passage you may have, but to better help us understand our lesson on this morning. There in the reading is this. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. The word of God for you, the people of God. I solicit and request your prayers and your amens. I want to talk about this morning for a few moments, knock down, but not out. Knock down, but not out. There's a story that is told of this teenage boy who took his girlfriend to the fair. So when he arrived, he had decided that he wanted to win her a teddy bear. There was a game that he would have to play in order to win the teddy bear. His job was to throw the baseballs and hit the little dolls that were set up. Shouldn't be anything difficult for him because he was a little lead pitcher. But every time he would throw the balls at the little doll, the doll would fall down but it would rise back up. Every time he would throw the baseball at the little dolls, the dolls would fall, but rise again. And to his frustration, he got to a point where he became frustrated. And he said to himself, or to the man who was behind the booth, why won't the dolls just stay down? If the man who was behind the booth says to, says to the little boy, I don't know why the dolls won't stay down. All I know is that whoever made the doll put something in the doll that no matter how many times they would fall, that they would rise again. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the story of many of us who are situated in cyber church this morning. That that is the story of many of us because we have been knocked down in some way or other. Another, you have been knocked down socially, you have been knocked down economically, you have been knocked down financially. But in spite of all that we, in spite of the fact of being knocked down, in spite of all that we have encountered, in spite of all that life has done to us, friends, we continue to rise back up. And here is is the reason why we rise back up. It's simply because uh, the one who has made us, the one um, who has built us, the one uh, who has put us together, the one uh, who has created us, uh, has placed something uh, on the inside of us uh, that no matter how many times uh, we fall, that no matter how many times uh, we are knocked down, no matter how many times uh, our backs are against the wall there is something on the inside of us that helps us to continue to rise I don't know if that's your testimony 
on this morning, but I believe that there are some people that can testify that I've been knocked down, that I've been out, that I've been laid down, but friends, I survived because the one who has made me has put something on the inside of me, and I can't tell you how is it that I'm still standing. I can't tell you after all 2020 has thrown at me. I don't know how I'm still standing, but my testimony is to 2021. I was knocked down in 2020, but I'm not I'm back up in 2021. That should be your testimony. That should be your story. That should be your narrative is that yes, I've been knocked down, but by the grace of God, I've been lifted up. That is that 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 is that is I believe the testimony believe that is the case in the text that is before us. When, when, when we get to the scene of this text, that's really what, friends, Paul is emphasizing in this text. Pa Paul is saying that what really matters is what's on the inside, not what's on the outside. Hear me and hear me again. What's on the inside is more valuable than what's on the outside. It's not about what's on the outside, but it's what's on the inside. And friends, I wish I could see you in your homes this morning. I, I wish I had a, a little bit more more people in here to talk back to me but listen I want to testify and I want to help you today because there are many people who have looked at your life uh, and they have stereotyped your life uh, based upon uh, what they see on the outside uh, but your testimony is this uh, the, it's not what's on uh, the outside uh, that matters it's what's on uh, the inside if you keep looking uh, at the outside uh, it'll seem as as if I, I'm weighed down. If you just keep looking at my outside, it'll seem as if I'm frustrated. If you keep looking at my outside, it'll seem as if my back is up against the wall. But you've got to look on the inside because it's what's on the inside that keeps me coming in here with the smile on my face. It's what's on the inside that keeps my hands lifted. It's what's on the inside that keeps my mouth open. Look at somebody in cyber world and say, neighbor, even in your homes, it's what's on, it's what's on the inside. That's what Paul is saying. To, that's what Paul meant early on when he says we have this treasure. Uh huh. In earthen vessel, Paul was simply stating that the believer is a jar of clay, and it is the treasure within the vessel that gives the vessel its value. I don't know if you're picking up what I'm throwing down. He says that we are a jar of clay, and it is the treasure with on the inside of the vessel that gives the vessel its value. This, this treasure, this, this, the, 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 the treasure is valuable and it matters not, hear me today my friends, it matters not what happens to the vessel because, yes God, the content is more powerful than the container. That's, that's, that's really what Paul is saying. The content is more important or more powerful than the container. Hear me, friends. When At the end of my life, at the end of this life, they are going to put this container in the ground, but they cannot take what's been put on the inside. What's on the inside is more valuable than what's on the outside. That's, that's, that's the real reason. That, that, that's why we shout. That's why we dance. That's why we give God glory after all that we've gone through, the ups uh, and the downs, uh, and the ins and the out. It's because of, it's because out of everything uh, we've gone through, out of all the things uh, that we experience in life, uh, it didn't shake us uh, or it couldn't shake what was on the inside. I want to help you. 
I want to help you as you're going and as you are meandering through 2021. I want to help you live by simply saying, don't spend all of your time worry about the outside. Don't spend all your time worrying about or working on the outside. I, I, I know where we are today. We're in the, this new time where many people are focusing on working out and getting into shape. And while it is true, I believe that you ought to take care of yourself. I believe that you should get a little exercise in here and there. But I believe what's on the inside of you is more important than what What's on the outside and here is the here here is the reality of today friends we have so many people who have spent so much time working on the outside but they are still mean on the inside we have so many people spend so much time working on the outside but you still got hate in your heart on the inside and what God is calling for you to do is for you to fix up what's on the inside and not on the outside it didn't it didn't shake us didn't shake us note 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 pastor pastor Baptiste note what Paul says in verse number 8 no 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 note what he says what Paul is saying in verse 8 because we have oh uh, yeah a treasure on the inside of us because we have a treasure on the inside, we have our moments of suffering. Please, I, I, got, I wish I had time to say that. We have our moments of suffering. We will have our moments of trials and tribulations. We will have our moments of being tossed and driven. We will have our moments where it seems as if life is topsy-turvy. We will have to deal with the vicissitudes of life, friends, but all because, this is why we are dealing with it, it's all because of of what we possess in the inside. Hear me. Lord, deliver me from people who feel because they are so deep and so wonderful that they don't have to go through trial. Lord, deliver me from individuals who think just because they've gone through a BTU or because they know a few Bible verses and because they are faithful to the ministry. God, deliver me from people like that who think that because they are faithful that they don't have to go through trial. It was Andre Crouch who said, if I never had a problem, how would I know that God was able to solve them? So through it all, I've learned how to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned how to depend on his holy word. I'm just simply saying to you friends that I understand why the attack of the enemy is so high in my life now it's simply because of what I possess on the inside he says, uh, he says uh, because we have this treasure because we, we, we have oh hallelujah this treasure we'll deal with suffering we'll deal with trial it's simply because of what we possess on the inside. The text says, text says that I'm moving as swiftly as I possibly can. Uh, the text, text says we are hard pressed. Uh -huh. on, 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 every, on every side yet uh, not crushed here, here it is, here it is, I want you to get it Paul says uh, that we are hemmed in a narrow space uh, from which there is no exit did you hear me? Paul says, Paul says, uh, we are hemmed in. And while we are being hemmed in, it seems as if uh, there is no way out. 
But in spite, friends, uh, of being hemmed in, in spite of me being hemmed in, what has me hemmed in has not crushed me. Hear me. I want to help. I want to talk to you just for a few moments because 2020 has had all of us uh, hemmed in uh, from social distance uh, to having to quarantine. It has had us hemmed in uh, from us going to our jobs uh, now becoming uh, remote. Everything has us him. In fact, I'm sitting in here. To, I'm sitting in here this morning preaching to you from a camera, not really having an audience. It has me. This moment has me hemmed in. But what Paul is saying, friends, is that what has had me hemmed in didn't crush me. That's what. That's a. Uh, that's that's good news. That's good news. That's good news this morning. That what has me hemmed in has not crushed me. I don't know what's happening up here, but I'm starting to feel I'm starting to feel a revival feeling on a Sunday morning. What has me hemmed in has not crushed me. He says, uh, he says, uh, we are hard pressed on every side. We are, we are, yes, Lord, we are, we are hemmed in. On every side. But we are not, we are not crushed. But watch this. The text is moving. Te text says, please keep your Bibles open so you can follow along with me. I, I don't want you to accuse me of making anything up. Te text says, text says, we are perplexed, but not in despair. It paints a picture, friends, of one coming into extreme despair that, that no one, that, 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 that one knows not what to do or where to look for help. Hear that again. It, it, it paints a picture of one coming into extreme despair that one knows not what to do or where to to look for help. God, hold me for a while. Paul, Paul, Paul is saying this, Pastor. He's saying that we are bewildered, but we are not benighted. Yeah. No, what, what, what Paul, Paul, Paul is saying, I'm going through, but while I'm going through, he's giving me, he's with me, giving me counsel and hope. All right. All right, all right, all right. I, I, I want to help you understand it this way. What, what, what Paul is saying is, Paul, Paul is saying that, that I'm in extreme despair. And uh, it seems as if I don't know what to do or who to seek help from. Maybe, maybe Paul should have borrowed the words of those pilgrims in Psalm 121 that said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from what cometh my help. All of my help comes from the Lord. He says, but, but, but watch this. He says, God, hold me. He says uh, that while I'm going through, he is with me and he's giving me counsel as I'm going through. He is, he is with me but but then he moves on the text is moving it says persecuted but not forsaken he speaks of hear me outward circumstances he says I'm in my moment of suffering and trial but while I'm in it I have not been abandoned and I am not without help yes God hold me I'm trying to help you live this morning what Paul is saying is this Paul hear me is not denying that he's in trouble I, 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 I know but I want to pause right there because in this new day in this new theology that seeks to tell us that, that we can name it claim it haul it call it stake it and take it that this new theology I know some of you you are in trouble because you've been listening to Jake's Joel and Joyce they'll tell 
tell you that, that, that suffering is not of God but I want to argue against that friends because and they'll tell you they even tell you that you have to speak those things as though they were friends hear me what Paul is simply saying to you and I is that yes I'm in trouble yes I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place yes I'm tossed and driven yes trouble is on every side but what Paul is saying is that my hope is in this is that in spite of all that I've gone through he has never left me he is with me he says uh, he says uh, in spite of all Pastor Baptiste your church is church I like it in spite of all that I'm going through Paul says I am not abandoned God has not abandoned me this is good news to me this is good news. This is good news this morning because it was Rick Warren in his book, Purpose Driven Life, that says, uh, never doubt in the dark what God has told you in the light. Uh, it simply means this, that if God uh, has told you in the light uh, that he'll be bread in a starving land, you can count on that when it gets dark. Uh, if God has told you in the light uh, that he'll be a friend uh, that stick it closer than any brother, you can count on that uh, when it gets dark. I'm moving. I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. But he says, uh, he says, struck down, but not destroy. Friends, this being, and I'm just about done, this being struck down paints a picture, yes, God, of a combatant who is thrown down by his antagonist in conflict and is awaiting his death but succeeds in rising again. Hear that, friends? He, it speaks of a, a, yeah, combatant who is thrown down by his antagonist in conflict and is waiting his death, but succeeds in rising again. Hear me, friends? Not being destroyed was the consequence of not being forsaken. Yes. All right. All right. I, I just said it. I just said it. The, This is what Paul says. Paul says, I know that I wasn't, I wasn't abandoned. I know I wasn't abandoned or forsaken. How do you know, Paul? Paul says, because uh, what I went through didn't kill me. That, that's, that's an indication that I know that I'm not forsaken, that I'm not abandoned. All right, all right. May the Lord bless you real good. I, I, I got to say good morning to you. Thank you for the time that you gave me. But, but I, I, I'm signing off. I'm hitting the runway as we speak now. Oh, that, there's, a, that, 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 there's a story. There, that, there's a story of this, of this, uh, this, this lady who had just had a newborn baby. Baby was a few months old, but uh, she called her, she called her daddy to come visit her. Sent for her daddy to come visit her. And uh, while she sent her daddy to, to come visit her, she uh, put her baby in the playpen. Put, put her baby in the playpen, and uh, the baby started crying, as any baby would do. Ba baby started crying, but but the dad but the granddaddy reached down in the playpen to pick up the baby, and the baby stopped crying. Baby stopped. Baby stopped crying. Uh, uh, what 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 happened was the mother came in the room and said, "Daddy, listen, we've raised you, raised us. You've had your moment to raise us. Let us raise our own child." Put the baby back in the playpen. Put the baby back in the playpen. Granddaddy put the baby back in the playpen. Well, the baby, as any other baby would do, the baby started crying again. The grandfather 
pick the baby up uh-huh. one more time. Yes. Mama came back in and said, Daddy, I told you. Uh-huh. I told you. Let me raise my kid. He got to learn how to stay in the playpen. Yes. Put the baby back in the playpen. Uh-huh. Yes. Don't take the baby out of the playpen. Yes. The baby started crying again. Uh-huh. But the grandfather looked at the baby and said, uh, your mom said, I can't take you out of the playpen. Yeah. Baby, baby, baby starts crying, crying, and, and at this point, the baby is crying to the top of his lungs. Yeah. And the grandfather said, baby, your mama told me that uh, I could not take you out of the playpen. Uh-huh. But the grandfather started pacing the floor, uh-huh. and he started thinking about what the mama said. The baby is still crying. The baby is still whining. The baby is still in, yeah, frustration. Because the grandfather has not picked the baby up. The grandfather said yes uh, to the baby that your mama told me that uh, that I cannot uh, take you out of the playpen. But he thought about it and he said to the baby, your mama told me that uh, I could that that I couldn't take you out of the playpen. But your mama didn't say that I couldn't get in the playpen with you. Have a good morning, but I'm leaving you when I say to you that it seemed like that God won't take you out of what you're going through when it seemed like the weight of the world is on your shoulder when it seemed as if life has tossed and driven you all kinds of ways I got good news for you if it seem as if the Lord won't take you out I'm here to say to you that he'll get in with you would you look at somebody in your home and say neighbor I've been in the storm and I've been in the rain I've had heartaches and pain but the Lord got in with me you you don't mind if I sing my song when peace like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my Lord thou has taught me to say it is well with my soul I know you can't touch nobody I know that you can't touch anybody but I wish I could see you in your homes I wish I could see you giving God praise and since you with your family let me ask you one question or let me tell you to do one thing and I'll leave you alone slip your arm around your neighbor pull them in real close Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. And tell them these words. I know 2020 has had you hemmed in. I know that 2020 has had your back up against the wall. I know that 2020 has had you in trouble. But neighbor, be not dismayed whatever be tied God will yes he will take care of you tell somebody in your living room he will take care of you he will won't he do it I said won't he do it I said won't he do it I said won't he do it tell somebody I know he will 
I know he will. I need to leave you alone. But can you tell somebody else? I know he will. Shout yes. Yes. He will. He will pick you up. Turn you. Lord, turn you around. Put your feet on solid ground. I know he will. I know he will. Shout Well, I hope you enjoyed the message this morning and something has been said or done that has touched your heart, that makes you want to grow more in God's word. If you have not given your life to Christ, today is a great day to do so. All you have to do is repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord, I am a sinner. I am in need of a savior. Come into my life so that I may follow you. I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, and that he died on the cross and he has risen from the dead. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, the Bible tells us that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, then you are now saved. I want to encourage you to find yourself a local church home. If you don't have one, I want to invite you to Mount Gillian Baptist Church, where we will make sure that you learn and grow in the Word of God. Hey, I would like to continue to thank everyone who has been giving through our text to give. If you would like to continue to give to this broadcasting ministry, all you have to do is text the word GIVE to 225-224-7556. Mount Gillian has a new app. So if you can, please go and download the app under Android or Apple, where you can give, we can stay connected with you through devotional, as well as other events that are going on here at Mount Gillian. Hey, if you know someone who would like to be connected to this broadcasting ministry, all they have to do is text the word LINK to 225-224-7556. As always, I want to remind you that Mount Gillian Baptist Church is a place where we love God and others. We connect with the lost. But one thing for sure, we want you to grow in the Word of God. This is a place where everybody is somebody.